Hi, my name is Dustin Turner. I serve as the Theology and Training Pastor for Vintage Church, and I want to thank you for joining me in this training session. This training session are, is for primarily the community group leaders of Vintage Church, but also for future community group leaders of Vintage, and just those in general who are interested in what it means to lead small groups and small group ministry. And today what we're going to be talking about is this concept or this idea of multiplying community group leaders. And so let me, let me just share with you for a second, why is this important to Vintage Church? And the reason is because Vintage Church believes in what we call gospel multiplication. And I want to define it for you, so here it is. Vintage Church is committed to our core values of living the gospel truth, loving the city love, and being the church community by multiplying individuals, community groups, and gatherings in New Orleans and beyond. So you might ask, well, why do you, why do you hold, why do you think, why do you believe in gospel multiplication? And the answer is, is because Jesus told us to go and make disciples. We read that in Matthew 28. And for Vintage Church, that is significant, and it looks... Making disciples looks like for us multiplying the gospel. And so first it starts in individuals. We want people to come to faith in Jesus. Secondly, though, we want those individuals to gather together as a community group and learn about Jesus, create community with one another, and then go out on mission. But thirdly, we want us to gather corporately as a body to worship and celebrate what Jesus has done. So a part of this training today is talking about what is it like, what does it mean to multiply community group leaders. And for us, this is kind of a two-part talk where in part 1A, we have to talk about what is it like, what does it mean to multiply community group leaders. The next training session and topic is going to be kind of be our part 1B where we talk about what does it mean, what does it look like to multiply community groups. And so it's important that we don't get the cart before the horse, that we have to talk about multiplying community group leaders before we can multiply a community group. So, here's some of the things that we're going to be talking about today. Honestly, when we talk about multiplying community group leaders, Vintage Church has set in place kind of a process that when we talk about multiplying any type of leader, whether it's a volunteer leader, a community group leader, or even a pastor with Vintage Church, we use this process. And this fourfold process is this. First is assessment. Secondly is recognition. Third is training. And the fourth is enlistment. So what I want to do is jump in, share this, dig, dig a little deeper into what this process looks like on a uh, step-by-step basis to give you an idea that as a community group leader, as a future leader, this is the process that I want to follow to multiply a leader and eventually multiply a community group. So the first thing is this assessment. This is a time where, as a leader, you're looking out into your community group and you're assessing strengths and weaknesses of people. You're assessing whether or not they have a potential to be a community group leader. Now the funny thing is about assessment is half the time when you're being assessed, you have no idea it's happening. The leader is assessing you behind behind closed doors almost. He's assessing, he or she is assessing you to see what you're like when you don't realize you're being watched. And so you're looking for these strengths and weaknesses. Here's some other things that as a, as a community group leader, you're looking for in a potential uh, future community group leader. Are they faithfully attend- attending vintage worship gatherings? Do you see them regularly worshiping with the church? Secondly, are they already a part of a community group? I hope that What you're assessing in a person is that they're there already participating in the community group. Third, are they serving on a V-team? Vintage Church has three V-teams. We have a Connect team, our kids, V-Kids team where we serve our children, and then our production team with sound and music and lights and media. Are they serving? Are they being faithful to serve and give of their time in one of those areas? And then giving to the vision and mission of Vintage Church. Money is important. Jesus talked about money all the time. And so in order for this ministry, for God to use this ministry and carry it forward, the people of the church who are committed to vintage need to be giving. And so those four things right there are very important in this assessment process. Are they doing those things? Another element is, have they been baptized as a believer by immersion? For us, this is significant. We hold our leaders to this level because we believe that the Bible teaches 
that when one comes to faith, they are then baptized. And they are baptized by immersion because the Bible talks about Jesus going under the water and coming out of the water. And so we want to be faithful to that. We want to be obedient to Jesus. And so our community group leaders need to be baptized as a believer by immersion. Here's another thing. Does the potential CG or community group apprentice exhibit these things? Godly and Christ-like character. Do they look like Jesus? Or do they look holy? I mean, are they following after Jesus? Are they growing to be uh, a Christ follower? Number two, do they have a calling to be a CG leader? Sometimes this idea of calling is a scary thing. Well, I didn't see a burning bush or I didn't hear God audibly. Well, sometimes a calling manifests itself in a desire. I have a desire to lead and shepherd and love other people. So do they have that calling? Chemistry. Chemistry with the vision, mission, and leadership of Vintage Church. Sometimes somebody can be a great leader. They can be a great community group leader. They can even be a great pastor. But they might not be the right fit for that particular organization or church. And so at Vintage Church, we want community group leaders who are committed to the vision and mission and leadership of Vintage Church. They, we want them to be a team player. Uh, because we know that when we are committed and we are unified as one, God is going to use that to glorify Himself and move forward the vision and mission of Vintage Church. So, character, calling, chemistry, and finally, competency. You know, do they have the skills and do they have the ability to be a community group leader? Now, here's the thing about competency. In my mind, it's the least important of these four things. I want someone to have character. I want them to be called to this. And I want them to fit on the team, to have the chemistry. Competency is important, but it's something that can be trained. What we're doing right now, this very moment, you watching this, this training video, is training you and equipping you for the work of the ministry as a community group leader. So know that if you don't feel competent as a community group leader or a future one, that you can grow in that. And so when we're looking, when we're assessing a community group leader or a potential community group leader, we're thinking and, and looking for those things. Also, in this assessment time, we want to have that potential community group leader fill out the Vintage Church community group leader application. And you can find that application online when you go to vintageunited.tv slash community. There's a, a button to push. You can fill out the application if you're, if you're interested uh, to be a community group leader. So we want all of that to happen after the application is brought in. Well, then your, your campus pastor and your discipleship director is then going to set up a time, just have an informal, in, informal interview, informal meeting with you, just to get to know you more as a potential community group leader and, and, and flesh out some of the questions that you answered, flesh out this character, calling, chemistry, and competency. So that is the assessment phase. So the first part of what it means to multiply a community group leader is to assess them. The second thing is this, it's recognition. And for a lot of people, recognition is going to seem to be a very basic idea. And it really is. It's very simple, yet it's very important. So in this idea of recognition, the first thing is that after you've assessed this potential community group leader, you're going to recognize that individual as a potential community group leader. And all that means is you're going to grab coffee with this person. You're going to pull them aside. You're going to talk to them on the phone. You're going to find some time to get with them and let them know, listen, I see character in your life. I see calling. I see uh, chemistry. I see competency. Man, you are so plugged into vintage. Are you interested in becoming a community group leader? Because I see the potential in that. And if he or she says yes, then you're taking that time to recognize them that, listen, we're in a process that, you know, you're not going to become a community group leader tomorrow, but you are in this process of what, it, what it's going to look like to raise you up and for you to one day lead a community group. So that's the first part of recognition in this multiplying community group leaders. The second part is that you now want to recognize the potential community group leader before your CG, before your community group. And the significance of that is you don't want your community group to be blindsided or to be uh, oblivious to the fact that you have this person who you're raising up to be a future leader. And so part of that is just, hey, you're, you're meeting together, you're having dinner, Bible study, prayer, and you're just taking a time to set them aside and say, hey group, I just wanted you to know that such and such 
is kind of in that process of becoming a community group leader. We don't know what that timeline looks like. We don't know when he's gonna, he or she's gonna multiply out. But what we do know is that uh, there's, there's character here, there's a calling, there's competency, and uh, there's chemistry, and this person wants to be a community group leader. So that is part of this recognition phase. So you move from this assessment phase to recognition, and then from recognition you move to this training phase. And training is vitally important. As we talked about, this idea of competency, if, if someone lacks competency as a uh, potential community group leader, and what I have found is that uh, no one is perfect, everyone is at a place where there can always grow, there can always be training, and so this training element of multiplying community group leaders is critically important for the future of community groups and the future of Vintage Church. And so this training element kind of looks, there's three elements to it. So here's the first thing. As a, as a community group leader, raising up and training a future community group leader, you want to provide consistent one-on-one -on -one training. Now, you, you're going to ask the question, well, what in the world does that look like? Well, let me give you some things, okay? Part of what we have done is we've put all of this community group leader training on our website. And maybe you're a past community group leader and you even have these hard documents. We've talked about things from discipleship, Bible study and prayer. What is a community group leader? What is a community group? How do I live a disciplined life? All of these things are important elements of this training. So part of this one-on-one -on -one training is just getting together once a week, once every two weeks, once a month with your apprentice to sit down and walk them through this training. So maybe part of your training, this one-on-one -on -one time, is walking them through what does it look like to multiply a community group leader? What does it look like to multiply community groups? So that's part of the training. The second one is beginning to, when you're in this assessment phase, you're looking for strengths and weaknesses and you're seeing these are weaknesses that this potential person has. And so what you're gonna do in this one-on-one -on -one training is begin to coach and begin to train these weaknesses. Listen, as a community group leader, uh, you have to facilitate discussions on a weekly basis. And so maybe that's a weakness for this potential community group leader. And my encouragement would be in that training, in that training phase, in that one-on-one -on -one training, you're gonna take that time to make them a stronger facilitator of discussions. And so that is part of uh, this consistent one-on-one -on -one training. And, and here's, the, here's the really vital important. You guys as community group leaders and as potential future CG leaders and even other churches out there, uh, you, have, you have coaches and pastors on your side. Uh, we're not wanting to leave you out for to you to do this on your own, to be a lone, uh, lone ranger out there. We are here as, as uh, resources for you. And so what I want to encourage you to do that if you're a community group leader or future community group leader, contact your campus pastor, contact me, and, and, and let us know how can we serve you. Let me know, hey, this person that I'm training up to be a future community group leader isn't right, isn't there where they need to be and what it means to facilitate a discussion. Well, that's my job to then help provide you with resources and ways to train them so that they can become a better facilitator of the group time. So, that, that's part of that training. The second thing is this, uh, almost on a monthly basis, at least nine times a year, we're gonna have community group leader meetings uh, for Vintage Church in general. And what's significant about that is those, those meetings are not closed only to the dubbed community group leaders. No, they're open to spouses and they're open to future community group leaders, your apprentice. And so I want to encourage you guys as community group leaders to invite them to the community group leader meeting because they're going to learn about things that they need to know as an apprentice, but also as a future community group leader when they're leading their own group. So we've talked about training and that training uh, first consists of that one-on-one -on -one training. It also consists of uh, inviting your future uh, potential community group leaders or apprentice to the community group leader meetings. But there is a third element with the training, and this is really significant. This is providing multiple opportunities for your apprentice to lead with and without you there. Now, let me give you uh, an example, the significance of this. There's going to be opportunities that as you're progressing in this training phase of multiplying a community group leader, 
where you want to be there. You want to have, you want to provide them with opportunities to, to lead so, so you can see. So you can see what's going on in the group. How are they interacting? What is it looking like? And let me give you a, a personal example. I was raising up a community group leader to multiply them out. And I was there. It was uh, kind of early on in the process, but I wanted to see how well they did in leading and facilitating the discussion. And so in that time, it was a great time, but there was something that I noticed where I was sitting, I could not see him leading the community group. Now what that meant was, is he couldn't give me eye contact and he couldn't engage me in conversation if he, could have, if he would have sat somewhere else. And the same was true because I wasn't the only one that couldn't see him. He was sitting in, a, in an awkward place in the room. And that opportunity with him leading with me there gave me a chance to go to him and say, man, you did a phenomenal job, really stellar work. But here's where you can grow. Where you sat, you didn't give them, you weren't able to give them eye contact. You weren't able to engage them in conversation. And just imagine if you would have sat somewhere else in the room so you could see them and so you could talk with them and engage them better. It would have totally increased uh, the conversation. It would increase the group growth. And so that's an element where in that training, it's important for, for you to be there as a community group leader to see how they lead and ultimately to help them grow as a community group leader. Now, farther on in the process, you definitely do also want to give them opportunities to lead without you there. You want to make sure that they can do this, that they can facilitate the discussion, that they can lead the community group without you there. And so it's vitally important for either you to be out of town or you to step back and say, hey, I'm not going to be here this week, and you lead. So you want to give them opportunities to lead with you there first and then later on with, without you there. So in understanding what it means to multiply community group leaders, we've talked about this. Number one is assessment. Number two is recognition, and number three is training. Now the fourth phase, the last phase, is this phase of enlistment. And enlistment, it goes hand in hand with multiplying community groups, as we'll talk about later. Uh, but the point of enlistment is this, and I want to read this passage for you because it's significant. It's Acts 13, 1 through 3, and I'll set the context for you. Paul and Barnabas are a part of the church at Antioch. And God all of a sudden says to the church, set these men apart for the work that I have for them. And this passage is uh, completely applicable to what it means to multiply community group leaders. And here it is. This is what Acts 13 says. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, a lifelong friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, and, and catch this, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And I catch this as well. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So when we talk about enlisting future new community group leaders, Acts 13 is huge. And here's why. Because this enlistment phase consists of three things. Three things that are very important. And here's number one. Set apart. Setting the community group leader apart. You want to take an opportunity to set them aside with the rest of the group and say, you know this person, now it's time, we're going to be multiplying he or she out with a group soon. But I'm setting that person apart to show the community group that this is serious, that this is important. And so in, in that enlistment phase, you're setting them apart. Number two is this. You're going to pray and commission. So the night that you're going to launch a new community group and you're enlisting a community group leader, you're setting that person apart. And you're actually going to, uh, this is very important. You want to do this. You want to pray and commission over them. I'm going to encourage you as a community group leader to encourage a group to lay hands on that future leader and to pray a prayer of commissioning. God, send him or her out and use them in a mighty way to multiply the gospel, to make disciples all over this city, this country, and this world, and have them multiply community groups, individuals, gatherings. 
So this praying and this commission is really important. The third thing is this, and I, I mean this when I say this, part of this enlistment is celebrating, to celebrate God raising this person up to lead a community group. It, it's not, it, it's so important because what you are celebrating in this moment, when you enlist a community group leader to lead a new community group, what you are doing is you are acknowledging that you are participating in, number one, making disciples, and number two, gospel multiplication. That what God has called Vintage Church to in New Orleans and beyond, you are becoming a part of it. And you celebrate that because that is God's grace and mercy and blessing of being a part of this. And so multiplying community group leaders and enlisting them is a celebration. Forego the conversation, forego the Bible study, just to spend time partying and celebrating what God is doing. So when we talk about what it means to multiply community group leaders, it's this four phase process. It's assessment, it's recognition, it's training, and then it's enlistment. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today just to hear this, to know how important multiplying community group leaders are and is to Vintage Church and to the church as a whole. And if you have any questions on this, please email me, dustin at vintageunited.tv. I'd love to talk with you, answer any questions that you have. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for joining me.